The way that you know if a medication is going to help somebody is A, does it work? And B, will you take it, right? No medication, no matter how effective it is, is not going to be a good one if somebody stops it after a couple of days. Um, so the Zy Zyprexa or Olanzapine showed some promise that when you're balancing how effective it is versus how tolerable it is, um, then it was a little bit more worth it than some of the other ones. And I don't think that people like the idea of committing themselves to long-term treatment, right? I I can't even take, you know, something like an antibiotic for a week. <laughs> that's a that's a commitment for me. So taking a medication once or twice or three times a day, you know, indefinitely is is a hard thing to well, no pun intended, swallow, right? Um, but I think one of the things that I help people figure out is, look, this is not a death sentence. This is not the end of the world. This is something that we're going to manage together. And I, I like to use- Managing together can be achieved in a number of ways. Someone with a diagnosis of mental illness, especially something like schizophrenia, will find themselves encountering many different people some who they only see once or only when things are at their worst. But life goes on beyond the hospital experience or the psychiatric appointment once a month or even every three months. One of the biggest gaps in care that we see is immediately after a hospital stay. So if you imagine somebody you know, gets so paranoid that they barricaded themselves in the room and they stopped eating for three days and uh, they're to the point where they either need to go to the hospital or something terrible is going to happen. Um, they get into the hospital, they get started on medications. One of the wonderful things about medications for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia is that they're they're reasonably effective um, and you can stabilize somebody in a short-ish amount of time and short is kind of depends on who's, who's asking the question or looking into it. Um, and then you transition them uh, to the outpatient setting, right? So you schedule them appointment with a psychiatrist and a therapist, and you say, I wish you the best of luck, right? Um, but what if that appointment is two months out? What if that person, as soon as they get out, maybe they couldn't fill the medication at the pharmacy? Maybe they had a side effect that they couldn't tolerate and they didn't have anybody to talk to. Um, maybe they just needed some encouragement to say like, hey, this is okay, we'll get you through it, right? And so we see a lot of people drop off after the first you know, 30 days or so of their hospital stay. And then what happens? They get back into their illness, they get back into the hospital. Um, and it can be- The value of a GP or psychotherapist or counselor is that they are more available, possibly every week or two weeks, more affordable, and have the time to establish a personal rapport, a degree of trust and collaboration in the task of staying well. You might be seeing the person four times as frequently as a psychiatrist does. And monthly visits, especially, you know, depending on the insurance and the availability, you might be looking at like every other month for a psychiatrist or every three months for a psychiatrist. And if you as a therapist are seeing this person week after week, you'll have a better trusting relationship and you'll be able to notice differences that the psychiatrist probably wouldn't be able to pick up on right away. Um, so that's an excellent opportunity to not just think about saying like, you got to stay on meds, you got to stay on meds, you got to stay on meds, but just figuring out what the person wants and what the barriers are. So if it's somebody who says, look, I want to be able to work again, that's my goal. You think about, well, what's getting in the way? Is it the illness? Are you getting so paranoid that you're leaving your job and um, getting fired left and right? That's one thing. Or is it the treatment? So maybe the illness is under control, but your medications are so sedating that you are sleeping in and not getting to work on time, right? And if you're looking at both of those aspects, both the, the illness itself and its treatment, and figuring out what are the barriers to achieving what this person wants, then you build that alliance with that individual and you can help them kind of achieve their goal by addressing which area is the most of a hindrance to, to the recovery.